Many people give up on the one yard line. See, life is not just that simple. It's not that cut and dry. And that's why most people never realize their personal greatness because they're casual about life. And when you are casual about life, you will end up a casualty. You can't get out of something, something that you're not willing to put into it. You have to put your everything, your mind, your energy, your effort, your discipline. Nothing is going to jump out the fire. If you don't throw something in there, it's not going to happen. It's a commitment. It's not a feeling. You do it because you're supposed to. Don't live frustrated thinking that there's something wrong with you trying to prove to them who you are, trying to convince them to affirm you, let it go. There's nothing wrong with you. If you had to have it, they would give it. Since you don't, shake it off, keep your head held high. Your value doesn't come from people, it comes from your creator. Either you take on the shape of your environment or you resist it and transform by the renewing of your mind. Everything you've ever changed about your life started in your head. It started in your head, it started in your mind, it started with a decision, it all starts in your mind. What we think is the best, many times, is far less than what God has in mind. You haven't seen your best days, you may feel stuck, doors have closed, that all happened for a reason. The best part of your life is not behind you. The best part of your life is the next part of your life. You wouldn't be discouraged over that door that closed if you knew what God was about to open. You haven't seen or imagined what God has in store. So feeling safe and feeling secure is very important to me and I think it's very important to every single person. I think that God created us to feel safe, secure, confident, and bold. Your soul maybe has it blocked, but God did not create you for fear and worry and insecurity and a lack of confidence and extreme shyness and extreme timidity. You will become whatever you cultivate, whatever you feed, that's what's going to grow in your life. I'm saved, but I got to change my diet. I'm saved, but I got to change who influences me, who speaks into my life, who feeds my mind, who determines what looks good on me, who determines what I can do and who I am. What's wrong with you is all those people who knew you win, because if they knew you win, they'll hold you to back then. I got to go. Too many people looking for identity and value and they're looking for it in all the wrong places. They look for it in what they do, who they know, what they own, what they look like. And I think that we need to do our best to look as good as we can. All I can say is take what God's given you and do the best you can with it. But don't be comparing yourself with somebody else. I become confident when I get the right view of other people and I get the right view of myself. It's amazing, right? You ever notice that arrogance requires advertising? But confidence speaks for itself. In fact, insecurity, cynicism, and arrogance, they're all loud. But confidence doesn't even have to speak. Because confidence isn't based on your words. Confidence is an action. It's an ability to step into the moment and say, I'm not backing down. I'm not quitting. I got my confidence back and I can fulfill. Your tongue is the rudder for your life. It's determining the direction. Next time you're tempted to say something negative about yourself, your future, your finances, zip it up. Don't steer yourself toward defeat. Say not you're too young. Say not you can't accomplish your dreams. God wouldn't have given them to you if you weren't well able. Try your best to trust God. Trust God's timing. And when He is sending you bold signs and wonders use those as confirmation when god is trying to steer you in a particular direction it's like little pieces of popcorn down a hallway and at some point you're going to get to that whole bucket love yourself make caring for you the highest priority in your life look out for what truly satisfies you we're not taught to look out for ourselves. We're not taught to take care of ourselves, to become sensitive to our wants, our desires. 
So make a conscious effort. Make you number one priority. Your health is more important than your family and any and everybody. Because if you don't have your health, you can't serve anybody. Don't neglect yourself. Greatness takes tremendous focus. It takes decisions that you make and you can't always have everybody approving of what you know you're supposed to do. And the sooner you understand that, the sooner you'll do great in life. You cannot have the approval of everyone and be great. You're always going to live your life at the lowest common denominator of your friends if you don't watch it. When you receive the message, when you receive the confirmations that these people that are around you are sucking you dry. So how could you have any love left inside of your heart to take care of your kids or your family when you got these people around you that are sucking you dry? Ah, I got nothing left. I'm going down. I'm melting. I'm melting. Why are you living a life to impress them? Why are you placing value on what they think? Doing all these things to impress them. Why? I'll tell you something right now, man. You need to place value on the people who love you at your worst. Because those are the people who deserve to be there when you're at your best. If you don't heal from emotional wounds, you will bleed on people that had nothing to do with it. How many people are living wounded over how they were raised? A friend that walked away? Instead of letting it go, they replay it in their mind. They wonder why they don't have good relationships. It's because they haven't healed. They're living out of a wounded place. Isn't it amazing how one bad relationship can ruin all of your other relationships? For really being honest tonight, most of the pain in our life, it comes from relationship pain. Some of the hardest things for us to get over, they're attached to people. Despise not the day of small beginnings. And so many people say, when I get a big break, when a big door opens, when somebody notices me, but that is not the key to success. The key to success is to start where you are, right where you are, not when things get better, but start where you are. The only thing worse than one who is inconsistent in applying their self-imposed disciplines is one who has never considered the need or the value of discipline at all. Changing loyalties and shifting frequently from one commitment to another. Leaving behind a trail of broken friendships and unfulfilled promises. All because of a discipline that was either non-existent or imposed so infrequently that it was ineffective. Most of us we're worried about suffering. We're afraid of it. it. When we're suffering and sacrificing, we wonder whether it's worth it. We wonder whether sacrifice or setbacks or suffering is a sign it's not our real dream. See, at the gym, you'd never think, oh, I'm going through some pain and discomfort. This must be a sign I shouldn't be at the gym. You'd never think that. You have to break it down, suffer and sacrifice for it to grow. When you need motivation yourself, don't look for someone to scream and yell. Don't look for someone else to give you motivation look at yourself and remind yourself why you are doing what you are doing this temporary pain this fight this is what will make you stronger that's the key word discipline self-discipline consistent self-discipline it doesn't really matter how smart you are or how much you know if you don't use it. Better than knowledge is applied knowledge. And once we've applied our knowledge, we must study the results of that process. Get the clutter out. Start letting some of this junk go to make some room for something else. Do that with people. There's some people who's cluttering up your life. They're just holding and occupying the space that somebody useful, positive, could be holding that space. You don't even have time to look to see what else is out there because you all have all of these people surrounding you that's not in enabling you to grow. Some of you tonight, you've experienced someone failing you. Maybe your mom was never there. Maybe it was a boyfriend who promised you the world but took off. Before you know it, what happens is these failures are holding us back 
from getting into our future. And these bad relationships are blinding us from all of the good potential relationships. Success is all about building relationships. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Some people might not step up when you ask them for help. But guess what? The worst thing can happen to you if somebody refuses you. You didn't have it anyway. Ask people. You never know. Suppose they say yes. That could be the turning factor. You will travel in the direction of your thinking. If you think down, you will go down. If you think up, you will come up. The way you think about your situation determines your reality. The way you think about your family determines your reality. The way you think about yourself. You're not being hurt by the way people think about you. Many of those people are a reflection of how you think about you. If you think about yourself a certain way, you will attract people who think about you a certain way. And you will expel from your life people who do not line up with how you think about yourself. The mind then becomes the battleground. The mind, Satan is always trying to do battle to take over your mind with warfare. Some of you is fighting your thoughts right now. Living in mourning is going to keep the new doors from opening. You have to heal so you can see the new relationships, the new opportunities. And the quicker you let things go, the easier it is. Your time is valuable. That's a distraction trying to get you off course. This is a verse you must remember all your life. It says, man's days are determined. That means you don't decide how long you live. Your life is on a timer. Extreme environments will turn you into a different creature. Extreme environments will make you move differently. It can happen in the midst of a dark depression, even in the middle of a gut-wrenching heartbreak, in the midst of unimaginable loss, it can happen. My question to you is, what's about to change inside of you that's gonna make people think you can defy gravity? It takes discipline to plan. It takes discipline to execute our plan. And it takes discipline to change either our plan or our method of executing that plan if the results are poor. It takes discipline to ponder the value of someone else's opinion when our pride and our arrogance leads us to believe that we are the only ones with the answers. What are your expectations? What do you expect to get from life? What do you expect to get from your relationships? What is your ideal day? What is it that you expect from this journey that you're involved in? People that have a strong sense of self-approval, they have high expectations for themselves and from others. I must be great. I'm pretty. I must be great. I have this validation that comes from stuff is never God. I'm really rubbing the grain. Y'all with me? Are you still with me? You can't wear a watch until who made it. You step on the runway. What are you wearing? You got everybody's name on you but your own. So no one is better or less when it comes to time and change. You become what you are by how you use your 24. You have no idea how strong you are. You're not in this thing, life, by yourself. But one of the things that I know about this thing called life, recognize what had happened, the role that I played in it, I had to keep it moving. Got to keep it moving. Each of us must live off the fruit of his thoughts in the future, because what you think today and tomorrow, next month and next year, will mold your life and determine your future. You're guided by your mind. You have built-in greatness. You have built-in power to handle whatever life throws at you. And life is going to be throwing a lot of stuff. Nobody's going to be spared. That's why Victor Frankl called it unavoidable suffering. But suffering is a choice because you can suffer or you can choose to do whatever you need to do to overcome whatever 
you are stuck in right now. Never underestimate the power of influence and associations. And never underestimate the power of your own consistent self-discipline. Sleep late, show up late. Waiting is always easier than acting. Imagine what life would be like if we didn't have to make our bed in the morning. Wouldn't it be fascinating if we didn't have to do these things? What do you suppose would become of us? You're right, not much. One of the great distractions of chasing our dreams is this thing that goes off in our head as we're negotiating the price we're paying. Is it getting too high? Is it too much? And you'll have people in your ear, it's too big a sacrifice. You're going through too much. It distracts all your focus. You can't be executing and negotiating simultaneously. So negotiate it now. Negotiate it with me now. What are you willing to pay for me? When I'm after something big, as long as it's legal, ethical, and moral, I'll sacrifice everything else. Greatness is not income. On the other hand, poverty is equated to greatness in a lot of people that, that if they have nothing, they must be great. And neither one is true. You're not great because you're poor. You're not great because you're rich. Your greatness is not based upon your income. As ye sow, so shall ye reap. It's the realization that your limitations are self-imposed and that the opportunities for you today are enormous beyond belief. To use all your courage to force yourself to think positively on your own problem. To let your marvelous mind think about your goal from all possible angles. There's some stuff you need to clean out and clear out in your life. Some activities, some relationships, some things, some events, some wrong thoughts, some misconceptions. Mental, physical, emotional, spiritual rubble in your life that you need to clear out. What's the rubble in your life? It's the stuff that keeps tripping you up. I want to begin the process of deserving. What would that be? What process should I begin engaging in to deserve good health, to deserve a good relationship? What must I do to begin the process of deserving? There's enough people that are telling us we can't do it, that we're not good enough. Why do we want to tell ourselves that? We know for a fact that thoughts influence actions. We need to get our own self-affirmations. There need to be quiet moments in your bedroom, quiet moments when you're brushing your teeth, that we need to reaffirm, I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. If you don't know who you are, you'll discount yourself. Think, oh man, I'm ordinary. Nothing much to offer, nothing special about me. Now life will try to make you feel like you're anything but amazing. Disappointments, betrayals, rejection will try to steal your sense of value. But all through the day, despite what thoughts are telling you, despite who left you out, you need to remind yourself, I am amazing. I have been wonderfully made. Don't go around feeling ordinary when in fact you're extraordinary. People may try to make you feel average. You don't have much to offer. Are you going to believe what people say about you or believe what God says about you? You're amazing. Have you ever said that to yourself? It has to start on the inside. If people can understand that as long as they don't forgive, they're poisoning themselves. It's like me being mad at somebody who hurt me that's out having a good time and don't even care that I'm mad. That doesn't hurt them. It's pointless. It's like, okay, you hurt me, but now if I'm going to hate you, then I'm letting you continue to hurt me. And you're controlling my life, and I'm not going to do that. It is your values. It is your ethics. It is how you make choices that gets you promoted. It is not your strength. It is not your talent. It is not how you fight. It is not how you draw. It is not your intellectualism. It is your values. So that when you're backed up against the wall and you have to make a decision, true leadership is how you make decisions in the moment. What do you care the most about? Being seen or being connected? Doors of opportunity are open to those who continually knock. So we don't find open doors of opportunity because we need them. We find them because we deserve them. Only those who knock deserve to find an open door. It's as if you search, you will find. 
Finding is reserved for the searchers because they deserve it. Now, at first they may have needed it, but they now know that just needing it is not sufficient. The reason why you're going to be blessed with good ideas is because you've come searching. And for those who search, they will find answers. To find a good idea, you must go looking if you wish to find. Rarely does a good idea interrupt you. So we get not what we need, but we get what we deserve. It's as if you ask, someone has an answer. If you keep asking, the answers belong to you. So we don't get what we need, we get what we deserve. moments that try the human soul so violently and so perplexing that if the truth were told all of us have had moments that we wanted to throw up our hands and walk away discouragement can creep in secretly hide behind clothes makeup hairdos Discouragement is so bold that it will even hide behind a smile. It will always ride to work with you. And if it doesn't catch a ride going to work, it'll catch a ride on the way back home. Discouragement will go into a tent. It will walk right into a Section 8 neighborhood. But don't think that it stops. Discouragement will walk right into a middle class house. It won't just stop there. It'll go in a mansion and sit on the side of a jacuzzi and tell you life is not worth living. If you listen at discouragement, it will cause you to make bad decisions. It will cause you to think that life is not worth living. And secretly behind the facade of a smile and a good morning and a praise Lord and a how are you, you will wonder if you're ever going to get out of what you're into. One of the things that we know about life is that it is always changing. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes you're happy and sometimes you're sad. Now that's that thing called life. And when we begin to understand and know that, accepting that reality that we will never ever have things just on an even kill all the time, that you're gonna have some ups and you're gonna have some downs. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. That's where the work is. Anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships, the children are acting normal, business is successful. Anybody could be positive then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. See, but the real challenge, the real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. Adversity introduces a man to himself or a woman. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. And you can run faster with a hundred who want to go than with one around your neck. These people are bad for your health. Toxic relationships are relationships with people that always criticize you. All they can do is find fault. All they can do is just exploit your weaknesses. All they can do is remind you of the mistakes that you've made in the past. How do you think? And how do you get to think the way you think? And what made you think what you think right now? The, the, the history that, that, that created you is still with you. And even though you wear different clothes, drive a different car, it's the same person. Because somehow, our history is so heavy, it's tough to cut loose. We still apologize for being successful. We feel ashamed to be in charge. See, there are some people that aren't good for you. So you got to look at the people in your life and find out what kind of person are you becoming because of that relationship. My mother used to say, birds of a feather flock together. You run around with losers, you will end up a loser.
Now listen to me. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care what you're going through. If you're not dead, he ain't through with you yet. As long as you're waking up, you're still in the game. You can still make it happen. As long as that breath in your nostrils, boo, you're still in the game. You still can win. Now get your butt up. This is time to look at the relationships in your life and ask the question, what kind of person am I becoming because of this relationship? Am I growing mentally and emotionally and spiritually? Am I becoming a better person because of this relationship? Is it an asset to me or a liability? Don't save that last bullet for yourself. You lock and load that last bullet and you shoot it at your enemy. And you keep fighting and you keep fighting no matter what. And if you feel like your life is in a place where you can't get any lower, good. Because that means the ultimate challenge is ahead of you. It means you can only go up. See, but will cause you to procrastinate. But will cause you to hide out behind fear. But will cause you to come up with all type of excuses that you can validate your inaction. And right now, more than ever, people need to look for ways to live their dream. People need, need to look for ways to make it on their own. There is no such thing as job security. There's no such thing as a storm-proof or tragic-proof life. Discipline is defined as self-imposed standards for the sake of a higher goal. All leaders have to have the quality of self-discipline. You are not a leader if you are not self-disciplined. A leader doesn't need much discipline from the outside. They self-impose discipline on themselves. And that is what we call self-discipline. Because what I want you to know, what I want to know, what I want to know, is that everything worthwhile is uphill. Everything. There is nothing in your life, there is nothing in my life that's worthwhile, that's quick and easy. You have to fight for it every day. You have to climb for it every day. Does it come to you? It's not in three easy packages and it's not the cure to overnight success. Everything worthwhile is uphill. For anybody out there who's chasing greatness, who's trying to make a change in their life, who knows that there is something better out there for them, I'm talking to you. Because on your journey to whatever you want, right, to that ever elusive best version of yourself, there's going to be times in your journey where you catch yourself comparing your path to others. And that's the problem. There are those of you, you're still immature. When your excitement is up, your effort is up. But when your excitement goes down, your effort goes down. For some of you, you're too seasonal. When you're excited, man, you coming to work the first week, the first month, the first three months when you got that job, you were excited, and so you were putting forth effort. You were blazing. Not you got comfortable, and you're not excited no more. And guess what happened? Your effort has gone down. So do me a favor. Get off of that feeling stuff. Get off your excitement. We're not dealing with feelings because feelings go up and down. You don't have to be excited. You made a commitment to that job. Didn't nobody force you to take that job. You signed your name on the dotted line. And commitment said, I don't care how I feel. I don't care if I'm excited. I don't care if I'm pumped up. I don't care if I'm fired up. You made a commitment. Now it's time to put up. The promise of the future is an awesome force. We look back for experience, but we have to look forward now for inspiration. And what gives us inspiration to get up in the morning and do our job, learn skills, develop all that we can possibly be, is the promise of the future. And it can be so powerful that it can overwhelm any adversary you might have, any difficulties you might have. 
Here's a key phrase. Reasons make the difference in how your life works out. Reasons make the difference in your appetite and zest for taking on the challenge, doing the job, becoming successful. Mr. Shoff said, if you have enough reasons, you can do the most incredible things. You can get through the most difficult day. You can overcome the most unbelievable challenges if you have enough reasons. And so he said to me, if you haven't got a list of your goals, Mr. Rohn, it's probably because you don't have enough reasons. He said, I'm sure since I've met you, you have enough intelligence. And he said, you have enough good health. And he said, you have, you know, all of those things working for you. But here's what you must work on now is to have enough reasons. Looking into the future, developing reasons. Okay. Now here's a note to make. It's important to make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Some people let the past pull them back, pull them back. The past can be like gravity if you let it to pull you back. Some people live in the past. They live in the darkness of the past. They live in the mistakes of the past. They live in the discouragement of the past. They didn't make it, you know, and that affects them for the rest of their life living in the past. So we don't want the past to pull us back to live in the past. So make this note, dreams and goals can become magnets. Dreams and goals can become magnets. And the stronger the goal, the higher the purpose, the more powerful the objective, the stronger this magnet is that pulls you that direction. You are everything. Keep trucking and keep doing the things that you need to do. There's greatness in you. Say it as many times as you have to. It can even start as a whisper. There's greatness in you. But keep repeating it because the mindset works best with consistency. Even when it hurts, even when it's hard. Keep moving forward. Keep believing in yourself. Every multimillionaire and every multi-billionaire in this world that are living on the top have all decided that I'm going to commit myself to this career, this vision, this goal. No parties. They're going to call you names. They're going to say you're corny. They're going to call you a square. Those are the characteristics of a champion. Those are the characteristics of someone that have said that I have decided that I'm going to create a shift in this universe. When I'm discouraged, I need somebody to come alongside me to encourage me that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That kind of talk wakes up my faith. Most of us go through life pretending, pretending that everything is okay, pretending that, that we don't have any special goals or ambitions or desires, pretending that we're satisfied where we are. But if you look at our behavior, if you judge based upon what we do, See, a lot of people pretend that they want more out of life, but all you have to do is watch their actions. That will tell you something. Some of y'all playing. Stop playing. You talk about you want to be successful. Stop tripping. You ain't serious. If you say it's too much, if you say you can't do no more, it means you don't want it. You're not willing to make the investment. It ain't never too much if you really want it. It's not the most talented person that succeeds. Talent don't mean a doggone thing if talent don't show up. It's not the quickest. It's not the fastest. It's not the strongest. No, 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 no. That's not the person who makes all their dreams become a reality. Sometimes it's less talent and more effort. So here's what we want to do in our goal setting session is to start looking into the future of what you would like to accomplish, and where you would like to go, the person you would like to be, and see if you can't get a better picture of the finished objective. See yourself there, see yourself in possession of. For your dreams to greatly influence you, for the future to pull you, your future must be well planned. There are two ways to face the future. One is with apprehension, the other with anticipation.
Guess how many people face the future with apprehension? Why? They don't have it well designed. And without really thinking about it, they have probably bought someone else's view of how to live. You will face the future with anticipation when you have planned a future you can get excited about. When you have designed your future results in advance. In this way, the future will capture your imagination. It will exert an enormous influence on you. And to design your future, you must have goals. Well-defined goals are like a magnet. They pull you in their direction. And the better you have defined them, the better you have described them, the harder you work on them, the stronger they pull. And they pull you through all kinds of difficulties too. Without goals, it is easy to let life deteriorate to the point where you're just making a living. It is not difficult to get trapped by economic necessity and settle for existence rather than substance. We all have a choice. We can either make a living or design a life. Now we're going to take some time to actually start designing the next 10 years of your life. We're going to start setting your goals. Goal setting is one of the most important skills to develop if you want to design your future. I'm going to give you enough homework not only to keep you busy for the rest of your life, but also to help you create the kind of life you may have always dreamed about living, but never believed possible. So let's get on with it. The sooner you exert the discipline, the sooner you will be enjoying the results. Once the results start to come, believe me, you won't mind the hard work and discipline it's going to take. Now, get a sheet of paper, and at the top of it, write the words, Long Range Goals. I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want you to jot down the answers. If you don't have paper and pen handy, follow along with me now anyway, just listening. Then later, listen again when you can write down your ideas. After I've asked the questions, which is the first part of this exercise, you can stop the tape and work on your answers. Entitle this part of it now, Workshop. And under the workshop, I'm going to ask a series of questions, and it's going to serve as a model so that you can teach this to your children, you can teach it in classes, you can teach it anywhere. Under the workshop, now here's the first question. What five things have you already accomplished that you're proud of? Let's take some credit before we go to work on the future. We've accomplished some things in the past. Let's give ourselves credit for that. What five things have you already accomplished that you're proud of? So I want you to make a note of that question and then I want you to do the exercise. Make a list of five things that you can think of that you've already accomplished that you're proud of. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching. So I'll hear people say, if you believe it, then you can achieve it. And the problem with that is they're leaving out the most important part of the equation. And that part is work, action, actually doing something. That's what you have to do to achieve anything. Yeah, you gotta believe it, but you better get the work done. And most people will not be successful. They will not reach whatever they wrote because when there's not anything emotionally attached to it, they're going to quit and give up. Most people were closer than they ever thought they were to finishing that big thing, but they never finished it because they didn't feel like finishing it. Or they were doing it and it was pain. And most people quit in the pain because the pain hurts so bad that they don't know if they want to keep going to get to go. Because you're going to wake up most days and not feel like it. You're going to wake up most days and not be pumped up. You're going to wake up most days and not feel like doing it. But when you can get to a point that you do it anyway, then there's no way you won't reach any of your goals.
There's things that you know you're supposed to do as a human being. Things that you know are going to improve your life. Do those things. There's things that you know are going to make you a worse person and make your life worse. Don't do those things. Get up early. Do some kind of workout. Eat good foods. Clean your room. Make a list of things that you're supposed to do in your life. And then wake up in the morning and do those things. And no, it is not easy. But you're not going to get it from anyone else but you. You think things are going to just go your way? Well, they're not going to just go your way. You got to make them go your way. You think things are going to just happen for you? Well, they're not just going to happen for you. You got to make them happen. Everyone seems to think that this world, this government, somebody owes them something. Nobody owes you shit. If you want something, go out there and get it. Go out there and take it. That's all there is to it. You need to stop this whining, this crying all the damn time, and get up and do something about it. And the biggest thing I see getting in the way is your f***ing feelings. F*** your feelings. Where there's a will, there's a way. When you've got air in your lungs, then you have no excuse. It's just a matter of perspective. You're either going to be a f***ing sheep, or you're going to be a lion. You're going to be an attacker and a go-getter. But if you want to sit there and cry, bitch, and moan and whine all the f***ing time, well, you can't, 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 then you sit your ass on that bench with the losers, and you stay there. But don't expect me to turn around and pat you on the back and say, hey, good job for being a f***ing quitter. Get up and do something about it. People who win can do sh and people who lose talk sh You can win if you choose to learn the things that you need to do and then can do them. That's reality. That's the sh nobody wants to admit because admitting so means that you have to take responsibility for where you are currently. And you have to say, I am where I am currently because I didn't do X, Y, and Z. And guess what? That can hurts a little bit. But once you accept that truth, you are able to then move forward with the actions required to get you to where you want to go. Discipline your body. Free your mind. Get up early and go. Get after it and you will become the person you want to be. And you become that person through one small decision at a time. Life responds to deserve, not need. Life was not designed to give us what we need. Life was designed to give us what we deserve. Once you understand that little life principle in your own self-interest, I'm telling you, it's life-changing. The ancient law does not go like this. If you need, you will reap. No, it doesn't work that way. A lot of people out there are hoping it works that way. But no, it doesn't. The ancient law goes like this. If you plant, you will reap. If you sow, you will reap. Somebody says, well, I really need to reap. Well, then you really need to plant in your own self-interest. Your own self-interest needs to be educated in how to plan, how to do it so everybody wins, because life doesn't respond to need. You can't go to the soil and say, I need a crop. The soil just smiles at you. And here's what the soil says. Don't bring me your need. Bring me some seed. Bring me some effort. Bring me some discipline. Bring me some interest. Bring me some service. Bring me these things and I'll return to you multiplied by two times, five times, ten times. You can't come with need. You've got to come with seed. You've got to come with willingness. You've got to come with skills. You've got to be willing to learn, willing to change, willing to grow, willing to put yourself out, willing to stand up to the bad weather, willing to pull out the weeds, willing to nurture. That's the only way you get a return. Once you understand these principles, Self-interest now truly becomes an exciting challenge. Making sure everybody wins. Now here's another one. If you want to find, you must search. And if you search, you will find. In order to find, you must search. You must go to the seminar. You must go to the library. You've got to go to the bookstore. You've got to go to the class. You've got to go searching. Why? If you search, you will find. You'll find ideas. You'll find inspiration. You'll find hope. You'll find contacts. But you've got to be out there on the search 
on the look. Life reserves its treasures for those who deserve it, not those who need it. Enlightened self-interest, giving so that you will receive, searching so that you will find, making sure that everybody wins all the way around. Enlightened self-interest needs to be educated. Enlightened self-interest says, I will learn that life is not just the passing of time. I will learn that life is the collection of experiences, ups and downs, highs and lows, laughter and tears. You must decide to act. You must have the discipline to act. Now here's what's important about discipline. One discipline affects another discipline. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. Don't be naive and say this doesn't matter. Of course it matters. It all matters. Some things may matter more than others, but everything matters. If you'd rather sleep in than go for a walk around the neighborhood, pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather spend your money instead of saving it, pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather work late every night instead of going home and spending time with your family, pretty soon it will matter. It all matters. Every letdown affects the rest. If you won't walk around the block, you probably won't eat right. And you probably won't buy the books. And you probably won't attend the seminar. And you probably won't spend your money wisely. And after years of this, it all adds up. So the key to reversing this process is to start picking up the disciplines. It does matter. It all matters. Now, here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects the rest. Every new discipline makes a difference. That's why action is so important. The smallest action, the least action, the action that you won't think will matter. It all matters. Take it. Because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return, you'll find inspiration to do the next one and the next one and the next one. If you start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to start eating right. You start eating right, it'll inspire you to get a book. You get a book and it'll inspire you to get a journal. You get a journal and it'll inspire you to develop some skills. Disciplines affect each other. Lack affects the rest of your life. The key is to diminish the lack. One of our greatest temptations is to just ease up a bit. To do just a little bit less than you're capable of. To take a little break. Somebody says, It'll just affect my sales. No, it'll affect your consciousness. It'll affect your philosophy. It'll affect your home life. It'll affect everything. No, you can't ease up a bit. That's what vacations are for. When you're at work, work. When you're on vacation, rest. Wherever you are, be there. If you think about vacation when you're at work, you'll surely think about work when you're on vacation. You'll just mess it all up. So be disciplined. Get involved. Do all that it takes to get the job done. Get your health back. Get your bank account where it's supposed to be. Get your family in order. Get disciplined, be disciplined every day. When you set up the disciplines that give your life structure, miracles can happen. Multiply. And I'm telling you, anybody who wants to make a drastic change in their income can do it. I was broke at age 25 and a millionaire at age 31. Everything around me was the same. I changed. I refined my philosophy. I read the books. I took the classes. Started looking at life a little differently. I'm telling you, it worked. There's no secret to success. There's a system to success. The system works if you work. If you don't work it, it won't work. But it works if you work it. And that's one four-letter word that most people don't like. They're not willing to work. I have a friend who invited me to her brother's house to help him to 
get off drugs, to introduce him to a drug program that can help him. And, and I said, these people can help you, but you've got to be willing to do the work. And after we finished, he asked us to leave. And I'll never forget what she said as we were going down the steps. She said, Les, I do apologize for wasting your time, but I realized when my brother knew that it would require work for him to get off drugs, that most people won't participate in their own lesson. And there are people who will be presented with an opportunity, who know that they could be laid off at any moment, who know that there's no such thing as jobs, who know that them keeping their job has nothing to do with how good they are. Yet and still, they'll go to work and have knots in their stomachs, hoping when they open up an email that they have not been told this is your last day. They'll go to work hoping there's not a security guard standing by their desk with a box and say, empty your things in here and take them to the front door and escort them to the park. They go in there hoping it doesn't happen. Why? Because they don't want to do the work. It's an aversion to most people's spirit. And I'm walking around in the jungle and I said, well, Lord, I can't fly like the eagle. I can't run like the cheetah. I can't roar like the lion and I can't throw my weight around like the elephant. What did you give man as his defense? In, in the whole ecosystem of human, of, of life force, what did you give me? He said, I gave you a brain. That's why God didn't make chairs. He only brings it halfway. We are taught that God makes furniture. I want you to look around your life for trees, not tables. God's going to bring it within the reach of your mind and your creativity is going to take it the, the rest of the way. Look at what all we were able to do. No other, no other creature, no other species has sent satellites up into the air, created smartphones. Look at what we did with our head. Why are we not using our head?